It's Game Boy Works, and this is Afterburst. A new publisher makes its debut on Game Boy this week, Messiah, also known as NCS. So it's not just a publisher, it's a great publisher whom everyone loves. Messiah, of course, is best known for its brilliant 16-bit shooters, which usually involved giant, stompy suits of mech armor. Think Cybernator, Assault Suits Lanos, and, uh, Cho and Niki. Messiah also published games in lots of other genres as well, including the Langrisser strategy RPG series. But the company is best known and best loved for its mech shooters. In true to form, that's precisely what we have here. Well, sort of. Afterburst sees a company known for its mech-based action games land on Game Boy. So, what do you think we end up with? That's right, it's a mech-based action puzzle game. Afterburst fits neatly into the same bucket as games we've already seen, like Psyraid. Kind of action-y, but in a complicated puzzle-solving sort of way. That can perhaps best be explained by the fact that the developer behind Afterburst is actually Duel, a studio we know from the games Boomer's Adventure and Asmic World, and Servant. Both of those games had a strong puzzle element and aspirations of Twitch action, something that manifested most jarringly in the form of the extremely difficult boss fights in Boomer's Adventure. Afterburst is a more consistent work, one in which you get to do both your shooting and your platforming from the word go. The game does have somewhat more straightforward battles with bosses every 10 stages, but for the most part you're trying to solve increasingly complex puzzle rooms by using a mobile suit. This makes it a fairly original and one-of-a-kind game for Game Boy, though Afterburst doesn't quite live up to its own concept in practice. So here's the premise behind Afterburst. You are a guy in a robot suit, jumping and shooting. Rather than trying to fly or fight through a series of scrolling levels packed with hazards though, you simply need to destroy a computer core in each room you encounter. Many stages in Afterburst consist of a single room, while others scroll a very short distance, never more than a screen or two, usually on the vertical axis. So it's a series of quick, self-contained challenges, with each stage rarely affording you more than about a minute and a half to complete them. There are a few unusual factors to consider as you play Afterburst. The most significant of these is your mech's weapon, which really stands apart from the usual Game Boy Fair. Your mech's main cannon, by default, fires a shell in a weak, lazy arc. It only goes forward a short distance, a couple of tiles, before plopping to the ground. However, you do have a charge function for your gun. Hold down the fire button, and a charge meter in the upper left-hand corner will build up. The further along in the charge cycle you release the fire button, the further your shell will travel. The longer you build up your force, the longer it takes for the projectile's trajectory to decay. If you charge it up all the way, your bullet will simply fly like you'd expect from a standard shooter. It blasts off in a straight line all the way to the edge of the screen. So learning to manage the arc of your projectiles is a big part of proper play here. Adding some nuance to the action is your suit's ability to aim its cannon through multiple angles, much as in Cybernator. You can press the up and down buttons to adjust your weapon through 90 degrees of motion, from straight ahead to straight up, and there are about six angles you can fire at within that range. Combine this range of motion with the arc of your projectiles, and suddenly the shooting mechanics become a lot more involved than in most other mech shooters. You can, for example, take out an enemy on the other side of a low barrier by aiming upward and giving your own attack a small charge boost, destroying a hostile robot without putting your own machine at risk. Of course, it's not always wise to wipe out the bad guys straight away. A great many of Afterburst's puzzles require you to use rather than abuse your enemies. Destroying a foe who's supposed to be a foothold can land you in an unwinnable situation. The first couple of stages treat enemies as nothing more than nuisances, but after completing a few levels, you begin to encounter more convoluted stages, where you have to use enemies as platforms in order to reach higher areas. There's a bit of trial and error required here, but nothing too exasperating. A lot of the complexity also emerges from the dynamic nature of the stages themselves, which is where the Psyraid comparison comes into play. As in that game, you spend a lot of time blowing up platforms and wall blocks in order to advance. Unlike in Psyraid, though, you don't have free reign over smashing up the environment. Instead, you can only destroy specific blocks. This is really where the puzzle element comes into play, because it only takes about five stages for these block-blasting mechanics to become extremely complex. Because you can only shoot and clear away specific wall blocks, most stages amount to convoluted spatial puzzles. You frequently need to blast blocks in a specific order to be able to take out the stage core, and it's quite easy to lock yourself out of a win. A big element adding to the complexity of Afterburst's level design is that shooting away bricks often causes portions of walls to fall. 
The idea, I guess, being that certain fragile blocks are in fact load-bearing pieces. Often you'll clear away a destructible brick and cause a permanent block to fall and take its place. So really understanding how stage layouts will shift as you destroy pieces of wall is quite possibly the single most important consideration in playing Afterburst. Once you have to start making use of enemy robots in order to complete stages while blasting out destructible blocks in a specific sequence, it gets pretty hard pretty fast. In that sense, the boss encounters are something of a relief because they dial back the puzzle mechanics and focus more on the action. Although that also kind of works against the boss stages because Afterburst could honestly stand to do a lot better on the action front. That's really the big disappointment here. For a Messiah published game about a big shooty robot, you'd expect Afterburst to play a lot better. Unfortunately, it's really rough on the tech front. Once you get a few moving objects on screen, Afterburst begins to demonstrate slowdown and choppiness to a degree that you rarely see on Game Boy. Things move in a halting, stuttering fashion, and this is not just something that would annoy fussy tech nerds. The lethargy of the action affects the gameplay. The boss battles are hair-pulling exercises in frustration, with barrages of enemy fire and objects that demand far greater precision than the game engine can handle. They're frankly unfair. And even when you're outside of fast-paced sequences and don't have to compensate for gameplay lag, the precision of Afterburst's controls still leaves something to be desired. Your little mech suit doesn't move pixel by pixel, but rather leaps forward a few pixels at a time. When the action is in full swing, you don't really notice this. When you're trying to fine-tune your angle of attack to solve a tricky puzzle, though, the clunky imprecision of Afterburst becomes frustratingly obvious. Afterburst's slowdown and the control lag make for a less-than-perfect game, and the technical flaws are a real disappointment considering how much the game does well. It's one of the more inventive shooters on Game Boy, or maybe one of the more inventive puzzle games. In a lot of ways, it feels like a precursor to more contemporary puzzle shooter works like Bangayo Spirit by Treasure. If you're looking for a fresh take on the puzzle genre, you could admittedly do a lot worse than Afterburst. But if you're hoping for a mind-blowingly intense messiah shooter on Game Boy, well, keep looking. Afterburst is a lot of things, but a worthy chapter of messiah's classic shooter legacy is not one of them. Next on Game Boy Works, it's another quick iteration sequel. 